Don't forget to stay tuned till the end to watch a video by our sponsor. Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. The biggest fight of Habib's career is definitely around the corner and even the most die-hard of fans are actually worried about him. But that is not the reason why the champ is trending. Douche. <laughs> So we saw how Tony acted at the press conference yesterday. There's some people that are saying maybe he's doing this to promote, but other people are saying maybe he has some mental problems and there's something wrong with him. May I ask, uh, which do you think it is? Honestly, you know, it's like nothing personal here. I don't want to talk about his problem, like family stuff, mental stuff, like... This is his problem, you know, leave him alone, you know. I don't want to talk about him, about his problem, because, like, everybody sit here, everybody have problem. You know, it's like, nobody's safe, you know. If he need help, we have to help him, but we're going to fight next fight, next month. I don't want to think about him, he's my opponent, you know. And uh, talk about his mental problem, I don't think it's, like, good stuff. I appreciate that. Let's face it guys, the journalist was clearly trying to bait Habib, yeah? To say something about Tony's mental health and then boom, he strikes. All these articles popping up about Habib and mental health and that could have caused a big problem for him. And if we look at the other people on stage, they probably would have taken the bait because as you can see, quite a few of them are sniggering and, and laughing. Of course, we can't be sure what the reason is. Maybe they don't understand the implications of the question or maybe their maturity is not there or whatever reason it may be. But our focus here is Habib. And let's face it, with how Tony was in the press conference, who could really blame Habib for reacting? You ain't sh without your homeboys, mother I don't talk in shit about your brother. All I'm just saying, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, you can see Tony was a right douchebag. I don't talk to you either, dirty no. Q-tip. Uh, uh, fat. We already are about the same size as like Cormier right now, dude. Like, and when I say douchebag, I mean the highest echelons of douchebagginess. What do you mean that's not a word? Now I'm game planning. I don't have daddy with me. And I don't have anybody holding my hand. And Habib, calm and collected as he is, gave a gentleman's response. After which the smile stopped and the nods of agreement started coming in. Let's face it, that's what leaders and trendsetters do and that's what makes them winners. We've heard the quote, darkness cannot extinguish darkness, it needs light to do so. But here on stage, we saw it actually being applied. The one ray of light that came from Habib extinguished the darkness in the minds of possibly the other people on stage and even the questioner by the end because even he had to admit. I appreciate that. And this is what I mean when I say dawa through actions. I mean our faith is so beautiful and if we can practice it publicly it can change a lot of minds. But the fact of the matter is nowadays we say something different but our actions say the opposite. And just through this one ray of light not only was he reaching people's hearts. Hey you got another comment saying his response legit made me cry. And the comment that got to me was Habib got me thinking I need to become Muslim. He leads such a great example, so much respect for him as a man, not just as a legendary fighter. Let's put our cards on the table guys, yeah? Habib, let's face it, the guy speaks broken English. That you hey, don't want to, hey, I don't have to bring this sunglasses. In I'm street, street fight, fight, I can you eat you, you understand? <laughs> He doesn't give long one hour lectures and speeches. So how is he impacting people? It's dawah through your actions. If you ask any average person, they'll say, In order to give dawah, you need to make sure your English is on point. You need to make sure you have complicated arguments and you look a certain way, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, let your actions do the talking. You learn something, put it into practice, like our brother Habib here is doing. And you will hear next month, inshallah, he will have won his next fight and will be undefeated inshallah. Alright guys, salam alaikum from me and let's hear from our sponsors. Would you like to finally get the house that you've been dreaming about without taking any interest-based loan in a 100% halal way? I know what you're thinking. Can this be real? It's too good to be true. Bear with me for just one minute and I'll tell you how. But first, let me share my and my team's story so you can understand where I'm coming from. 
the last 10 years we have been active in da'wah and raised one million dollars for establishing a masjid in one of the most northern countries of the world, Norway. And this will not be any average masjid. It will be the da'wah and tarbiyah center in Norway. Now, how is this information about this masjid relevant to you getting your house? I'll tell you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever builds a mosque for the sake of Allah, Allah will build for him a house in paradise. We need to raise the remaining amount to establish this masjid. This is the way you can have your dream house. And this house will not be built with any ordinary bricks. No, this house will be made of bricks of gold and silver. A house that can be so huge that it will take years and years for you to traverse through it. And you may have hundreds and hundreds of servants inside of it to serve you perpetually. And you can reside in this forever. I know you are thinking of a house in this world, but wallahi, if you can get a house in Jannah, there is no house in this world that can ever compare to it. But do you know what? You could actually also get a house in this world in addition to the house in Jannah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Sabah chapter 34 verse 39 وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ Whatever you spend of anything in Allah's cause, Allah Ta'ala will replace it. وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ And He is the best of providers. Spending for the sake of Allah is one of the means of increasing one's provision. So what do you say? Would you like to get a house in Jannah? Then click the link, donate, and Allah will even replace it for you in this world. And share this video so that you will get the reward of those who donate because of you sharing it.